Hello everybody and welcome to Aurora Play. My name is Jessie Marion Davis and I am delighted to be joined by principal cellist of Aurora Orchestra today, Torren Setter Stavseng. Torren, thank you so much for joining us. And I'm going to ask you a few questions about um, Aurora's performance at the BBC Proms in 2017 of Beethoven's Third Symphony, The Eroica. Uh, now, obviously this is a, is a celebrated and treasured work and I wanted to start by asking you uh, why you think it's such a remarkable symphony. The Eroica Symphony for me is just an extremely exciting piece of music. <laughs> It has an exceptional sense of drama from the beginning to the end and it just grips you and it forces you to follow. The piece is radical um, in its way of breaking boundaries in terms of its length, the scale of it, the form, the harmonic structure. Um, it was you know unheard before that a, a symphony could could be this. So it's, it's kind of celebrating and showcasing what a symphony can be and what an orchestra as an instrument can be. Um, but alongside that, I think um, the emotional depth of the piece um, and the storytelling is just very unique. But also, I mean, the whole orchestra have committed the symphony to memory. Um, I, I just would love to ask you, first of all, about yeah your, your process as a musician. How, how do you go about that? big task. Indeed it was a big task. I mean entering the stage or in the Royal Albert Hall with 6,000 people and the cameras rolling it was um, it was a kick really um, to to go in there with uh, with not a single note in front of you. Um, so no it was extremely exciting um, but I think for me what um, performing from memory it just gives me a unique opportunity to really get inside the piece in a new way um, and it's a tool on how to as a group really find uh, internal freedom and a different sort of physicality amongst us as players. Um, obviously I have to spend a lot of time with my own part and, and the score and each player will give you different answers on how they do that. Um, I remember the Eroica was, because of its length and the scale, it was, uh, it was hard at the beginning. I thought, oh, how, how is this going to get into my, into my head and my fingers? So I plastered the pages around my flat and just in hope of like, whenever I just moved around the flat, it would, something would, would stick. So no, I do remember a certain kind of, oh my God, this is endless. This, the first movement never ends. but. But then it is a process, and it's uh, um, it is just it's just a unique chance and opportunity to really get into it. And then I feel when we meet um, as a group for rehearsals, a lot um, happens then in the way we then start to connect with each other, and and especially in that physical kind of way, you have to find it has to sort of sit, and you have to find your your way as a group together. Torin, what would you say is, is a particular highlight for you of this incredible symphony? Which is your favourite section? Yes, there's many amazing bits I could talk about. Um, but if I'm going to talk about one, it'll have to be uh, in the first movement in the development section, um, where we've had this long stretch of tension building and it's confusion and it's searching and uncertainty going on and then suddenly the whole band just gathers into these forzato uh, syncopated chords together and it's just kind of building momentum and it, it's he just sits on them and won't let you go. ends in this wrenching dissonant chord um, and then it all just dies down and you're just left with this fragile 
painful melody in the cellos and the oboes. It's ah, oh, it's just it's just shocking and and it shakes me every time really that that bit. What do you think is special about um, the BBC Proms performing in the Royal Albert Hall? Do you enjoy that experience particularly, sort of more or less than others? The Proms is it's absolute uh, highlight. It's it's so um, it's a unique experience, definitely. It's it's incredible uh, to to walk into that room and there's so much love for the music and so uh, intense listening from so many people in the same room at the same time. It's uh, it's electric, actually. It's, it's a very special uh, experience. Aurora Orchestra is definitely known for its um, bold and innovative programming. And I know that I've even emceed a late night interactive concert with you where you did a duet with a kettle that was boiling, <laughs> which was amazing. I feel like that's the first time I properly met you. Um, and it was it was so good. I'll never forget it. Um, but my question to you really, I suppose, is, um, yeah, what do you find challenging or stimulating or rewarding about about your role as you know, principal cellist with Aurora Orchestra? I love that we um, are thrown all these different challenges at us. If it's, you know, it really gives us something to chew into, and you 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 have to you're being stretched and for each different program, um, whether it is playing from memory or it's intimate chamber music or it's uh, theatrical uh, exploring. And um, I guess it's, it's that constant challenge as a player and as a, as a person, um, I really appreciate. Torin, what do you love about being an orchestral musician and, and particularly a cellist? Well, the cello is, I can link it to the Eroica, for example. It's, it, it is a wonderful feeling to be able to play the bass. And it has so many really juicy, good bass bits where you just, you're the foundation and you've got rhythmic drive and you can kind of, you shape it from the bottom and up. But then there's also wonderful melodies together with the woodwinds or, or even just the opening of the whole symphony. It's, it's quite unusual. Suddenly the cellos have this very easygoing, uh, wonderful melody that um, it's, I think that's main reason why I love to play the cello, really. It, you can, it's, it's very versatile. Do you think the orchestra um, get on well? Do you think they, they, they are sort of encouraged to bond maybe quicker or further than other ensembles because of what's asked of them? Definitely. I mean, it's, it's kind of that feeling of we're all in this together. And, um, and um, yeah, that, that brings us very close. Yeah, definitely. And you, you, we have to, we take care of each other. And it's, uh, no, you are, there are some, some boundaries that are then definitely being taken out because we have to, we're slightly maybe out of our comfort zone or we have a, a particular challenge and, and it just makes us having to sort of solve it or, or approach it in a creative way. And, and it brings us closer together, definitely. Amazing that focusing on bringing down sort of potential barriers with an audience might even be doing that within, within an ensemble, within an orchestra. I find that really interesting. Um, Torrent, thank you so much for answering my questions and I really look forward to watching Aurora's um, streaming of the Eroica Symphony this Sunday. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Jesse. Lovely to chat.